Hey there, welcome to this video on audio events. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use audio files, time to events, and then fire those events off to get your different sound effects. And then at the end, we'll talk about some of the nuances of audio events and the things that you'll need to do to prepare this for if you're gonna embed it on a website or something like that. So what I've got here in this file is a button that has a hover and a unhovered state. So you can see we have that interaction already set up here. And it's cool, but I want to add in some audio for it. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and pause my state machine and create an event. So you can either do that by going up here to the events tool, or you can hit shift E and that will activate the events tool. And then you can click anywhere on the stage and that will add an event to the currently selected artboard. Now, if we look at the inspector, you can see this type drop down here. If we click on that, you can see that we have general, open URL, and then this new option called audio. So if we click on that, we'll have some new properties here. Um, we've got this play button that would play back our sound effect if we had one in here. We have this assets drop down panel, and if we click on that, nothing happens, and that's because if we go to our assets tab, you'll notice that we don't actually have any audio assets added to the file yet. And then we have this button down here called Browse Sounds. Now we've partnered with Soundly to give you over 3,000 sound effects that you can use. Uh, so if you click on this button, you're gonna have this pop-up open up and these are all the sound effects that are included um, that you can go ahead and add. So you can either search through here and find one or you, know, you can type in up here. So like if I wanted to find a fart sound effect, I can just type that in and find all of the different fart sound effects. Uh, but for this, we need something that's a little more uh, UI or like sci-fi-ish. So if we scroll down here, you can see that there is a little um, UI section that we're going to use. So user interface. And then we have a bunch of different subcategories within that. And I'm going to go here to this glitch um, option, click on that. And now I have my sound uh, clip. So if we want to preview this sound clip, we can hit the plus button. And you can hear that that's got the little sound effect playing, and we can start and stop it however we want. And if we want to actually use this sound effect, we can hit the plus button, and you'll see that that actually adds it right here to the assets panel. Now, if we want to grab more sound effects, we could keep this open um, and then just you know grab more, and those would just dump right here into our um, assets uh, uh, panel. Or we can close this out because for this, I'm only going to need to use this one sound effect. All right, if we wanna add this sound effect to our file, there's two ways to do it. We can either go here to our event and use the assets drop down panel here. And then you can see that asset that we have that's been added to the um, assets panel. We can also rename this to make it a little bit shorter because it's a little long and we can call this um, glitch audio. And so now when we go back here and we um, use that assets drop down, uh, you can see the glitch audio as well. So once we select that, we now have the plus button where we can preview it and we can pause it as well. Um, and another thing that we can do is adjust the volume of this um, audio event. So if you select the audio um, file here, if you go into the inspector, you'll see this volume um, uh, number input here. So we could change this to, let's say, uh, let's make it really noticeable and go down to like 20%. And then if we play it, You'll hear that it's much quieter now. Um, we can also turn it up past 100, so to like 200%, which makes it really loud. So I'm just gonna go back and uh, put it back to 100%. Now keep in mind that for right now, volume is not an animatable property. That's gonna come in phase two when we have audio emitters um, and things like that. You'll be able to key this volume um, and do fade, fade in and fade out and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So you're probably thinking, well, this clip is a little too long to be using uh, for an interaction that's uh, pretty short like this. So how can we clip this down? Well, we can do that with the waveform clipper. So let me show you how to use that. We can go in to our audio file. And when we click it, we have this little, um, this little uh, twizzle down here that when we click on it, it will expose the whole waveform and we can see it and play it back. And from here, we can make selections. So you'll see this little plus icon pop up. If you click and drag, that'll allow you to make a selection. 
and you can see that that selected just a small portion of the audio and we can adjust that to make it longer or shorter if we want. So I think this clip right here is what we're actually gonna use. Now, if I wanna save this clip so I can actually use it, I need to hit the plus button and this will create a clip and you'll see that that clip is a child of the audio file. Now, I wanna get two separate audio clips out of here because if we look at the interaction, we have a hover and unhover state so we could play two separate audio clips if we wanted. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a second audio clip here, maybe from over here. Let's check this out. All right, I think that'll work. So we'll go ahead and save that clip and I'm gonna rename these. So we're gonna call this clip one and clip two. All right, and now that we have our events, I'm gonna go ahead and drag these onto um, the stage. So grab clip one and clip two. So now I have both of my audio clips and now it's time to trigger the audio. Now we have a couple ways that we can do that. Um, we can key them onto our animation. So let's say for example, we wanna use the animation. I can go and select my um, audio event and then we'll have this button here called play audio. And if we click the play button, you'll hear that it plays uh, during the playback. So uh, we can use this to sort of line up our motion with the actual clip. Now, most of the time I use the second way, which is tying my event to a transition. So let's say for example, we wanna have um, this first clip play on our first transition and then the second one play on the second transition. We can click on those and add our clips in like this. And now when we play our state machine, we can have those two audio clips play. Now there's a third way that you can have these um, audio clips play and that's on an event or a listener. So let's say for example, um, we want to, um, instead of having it play on our transitions, we wanna have um, the clip one play when we actually um, fire off this listener. So we can add in report event and then we can grab clip one and we can do the same for the pointer exit that event and we'll fire off clip two. So let's make sure that these are removed from the transition so you can see that these work here too. And there you go. So those are the three different ways that you can actually report these audio events um, in your RIA file. Now the free Soundly assets are great to use if you wanna get some quick sound in there, but you might have some sound effects that um, either you've created or you've downloaded from some other website or you have a pro Soundly account, something like that, um, and you wanna actually add those assets to your file. Well, we can do that um, by hitting the plus button here next to the audio section in our assets panel. And that will open up um, the file browser for you and you can select uh, some of those audio files that you want. So in this case, I've got two different um, audio clips that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna upload those. And you'll see that once they're done uploading, um, they're ready to use just like any other clip. So I'm just gonna swap these out. So instead of clip one, I'm gonna use Fooey one. Instead of clip two, I'm gonna use Fooey two. And there we go. I'm much happier with those sound effects um, in my file. Now, the last thing that I wanna cover is some of the limitations with this and some proposed workarounds for when you're building out um, audio experiences or your interactive experiences that have audio, uh, especially if you're gonna be sharing them to the community or some sort of web page. So if we go ahead and generate a share link and then we take a look at some of my older links here, we can grab this embed code and this will give us a preview of what Rive is going to, or what this file is gonna sound like if you embed it in a web page. So you'll notice that if I um, hover over my um, asset, uh, you didn't hear the sound effect. And if I unhover it, you don't hear the sound effect. This sound effect is only gonna start kicking in once we actually click on the asset. Now you heard the, um, the sound effect after I clicked, which is not exactly what we want, but you'll see that now the sound effects actually work um, how we expect. So let's go back to Rive 
and I'll show you a workaround for this, um, you know, something that you can build into your files to help out with your experiences. Since audio doesn't kick in until a user actually clicks on your file, uh, sort of like a video that's not set to audio play that you have to click on to actually get it to play, um, what we're recommending is building in little start buttons for your interactive experiences. So like in this case, I built in a power on button so that when you click it, there's this boot up sequence that actually starts. And then we have the, um, the menu button or the uh, little button that I created. So now let's check out the, uh, share links. Let me generate a new share link. We'll generate this one and then we'll check out that embed code again. All right, so let's open that up and we now have uh, the new version of the file. So when I click on this, all of my sound effects work exactly how I would expect them to. So this is just something to keep in mind when you're building out your interactive experiences. Give your users something to click on to encourage them to click on the RAI file so it'll actually engage that sound. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments and we'll get back to them as soon as we can.